The mission of the National Fire Heritage Center is to preserve the perishable history of the fire services and fire protection disciplines. Here are the inductees for the Hall of Legends, Legacies, and Leaders. For 2020, Dr. Harry Robert Carter, James Dalton, Christopher M. Frazier, Paul F. Hanneman, Joseph M. Starnes, Lee R. Starrick Sr. For 2021, Anthony C. Apfelbeck, Donald P. Bliss, Ricky N. Brockman, David Casey, Dr. Burton Clark, Jim Crawford, I. David Daniels, Larry Davis, Dr. Paul O. Davis, M. H. Estep, Michael Hildebrand, Dr. Carl G. Holmes, Rhoda May Kerr, John Leahy, Garrett Augustus Morgan, Don Oliver, Ernst R. Piercy, Charles Rule, Bruce Varner, Charles Werner, and Warren Whitley. Please give them all a round of applause. John Alston, what can you say? Firefighter, husband, son, chief, role model. Our next speaker is all of those things rolled up into one incredibly beautiful man. John and I have been friends for longer than I can remember. And at my age, that's saying something. John comes from a place of gentle confidence, not cockiness, self-assuredness, and grace. John listens. He really listens. He responds to real concerns in very authentic and kind ways. It's always impacted me in ways that are hard to express and every other friend of his, and it lasts for a lifetime. I can say without hesitation that I'm a better man because of my friendship with John. You can too. If you do this, you're going to see him on the street walking with his wife and family this week. Say hi. Introduce yourself. I guarantee you, you will walk away with a new friend, a smile on your face, and a feeling that somehow the world is just a better place. I am now and I always will be John's friend. And you will be too. And now for a very quick bio on this incredibly great man. John Alston is a 35-year veteran of the fire service. He is the chief of the New Haven, Connecticut Fire Department. He is the former deputy chief of special operations for the New Jersey, New Jersey City Fire Department. He has presented on workshops ranging from incident command systems to high-rise building to character and personal development. He's a featured speaker, keynote speaker, and he publishes a blog called, appropriately, Fire Officer Trust. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most important friends in my life and a future friend to all of you, FDIC's featured speaker, Chief John Alston. Thank you so much. How do you follow that? We've had two days of Bobby, and to see Mike and his family, even giving quotes that my dad taught me as a child, made the connection for me. I want to thank you. But before I begin, some of you have known the tragedy that my department has experienced over the last four months. I want to thank you publicly for the calls, the letters. I see you there, New Haven. I appreciate you being here. But I wanted that up first so that my department knows that even though I'm here, I still carry you with me always. Always. Thank you. <laughs> do you ever wonder, do you ever wonder where the great achievements in the world come from? Who had the vision? Who had the courage, the perseverance, the patience? to see them through. 
the world is filled with big ideas and dreams achieved by those who had the vision and took the first step to achieve that, that vision. Consider the Wright brothers, the Wright brothers. They knew more about bicycles than they did aeronautics. They had no instructor, no training, no pilot's license. They had no one to cheer them on, no flight school, no, not even a flight academy. In fact, there wasn't even a runway. Their own father turned his back on them and said, if God had meant for man to fly, he would have given them wings. Come to think of it, they didn't even have a landing strip. Yet, they are credited with inventing and flying the first successful aircraft in our nation. What about you? Or you? Did you ever ask yourself, what if? What if I could write a book, become an instructor, mentor a child, speak a foreign language? What if I could do the next great thing that would change my community or our industry? What dreams are there that lie still in the recesses of your mind? What dreams have you left on the table, either because you thought you couldn't achieve them, or you just didn't feel that they were worthy to move on with? Well, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in 1960. I was born in Jersey City, New Jersey, and I grew up around the corner from Engine Company 8 on Eagy Avenue. And as you can imagine, in the 60s, the fire departments were really busy back then. And I would see trucks go by every, every, every day. I was four years old, and all I ever wanted to do was ride with them. I mean, what little boy or girl loves a big red, or as I've come to love, white fire truck? <laughs> The men on those trucks would always wave at me. They would always smile. I wanted to be just like them. In fact, I used to cry when they passed my house. Until one day, they pulled out front and asked my mom, could I take a ride around the corner? That was it. I was bitten by the bug for which there is no cure. I was bitten by the bug to become a firefighter. It was my dream and became all I ever wanted to do until I made it come true. And I stand here before you right now with the heart of that four-year-old boy enmeshed in that dream, the desire to make a difference in my community, to be a part of something greater, to help save the world. As a proud member, to stand next to the women and men of the fire service to fight the good fight. So why am I here with you today? Because that initial dream evolved into something much, much more. And it's part of why I want to be mentored and continue to mentor people. In fact, one of my mentors, Commissioner Lloyd Ayers, made a profound impact in my life. And then that combined with a chance dinner with Bobby a few years back, sealed the deal. I met Bobby several years ago through one of my mentors, Dr. Carl Holmes, who you saw up on the screen earlier. Then when I saw him again 10 years after that at Lenny Carmichael's house having a dinner, he asked me, why hadn't I written for, for fire engineering and why didn't I want to teach for them? And I explained to him I had. They just never accepted me. I was cut off at the past. He invited me to try again, and I said, why? He said, because I'm the editor of Fire Engineering. <laughs> Good timing on my part, I know. I remember that moment because it was significant. I did have something I wanted to give back. I did have something I wanted to share. But there were things I wanted to share and do, but I had been cut off. And, sadly, I had given up. Then along comes Bobby, who offered me a new opportunity. That sincere offer coupled with training and mentorship early on in my career by captains like Captain Thomas Taylor in Jersey City, by Captain David Floyd, FDNY, and we all know Dr. Dennis O'Neill, who pushed me to become an instructor. I didn't stand around and gripe about it. I jumped at the chance. And I've been writing and teaching ever since. 
So the title of my talk this morning is, You Can Get There From Here. You can get there from here. What do I mean by that? I wanted to be a firefighter. I didn't see myself as an instructor and didn't believe I could even be a chief officer. And I assure you, there were plenty of people that agreed and didn't see it in me either. In fact, in the training academy, in proby school, I had a chief tell me, you look like trouble and you'll make it over my dead body. So when I made captain, I sent him flowers and a sympathy card. <laughs> you see, my f dear friends, dreams don't die. They only die if you let them. And even if you achieve your dream, it's not like you check the box or put the baby to bed. It's not done there. The desires that lie deep within your heart, they evolve. They change into something new. For instance, my dream didn't end the moment I put on this badge. In fact, when Bobby offered the chance to teach for fire engineering, a new dream was born. And before you knew it, I was being encouraged by other people to do more. Little did I know it, over time, I was being prepared. I was being asked to step up and do more in our industry. And quickly, my dream be of becoming a firefighter had evolved into something greater. Helping to mold the next generation of firefighters. That's what dreams do. They change. They change as you change. Because quite honestly, standing on this stage right now, trying to inspire you to be more than what you've ever dreamed that you could be, is certainly not something I thought I'd be doing right now. My dream was to ride the truck and fight fires. So what's my point? My point is that all dreams, all of them, start in your heart and in your mind. In one of my favorite books, there's a passage that says, As a man thinketh, so is he. As I grew on and I learned even to read even more, there's a book by James Allen that says, As a man thinketh. It talks about how we think things into our lives, how we can change our lives just by being more positive than negative. And then I read Margaret Thatcher. I know, odd reading list, not for me. She said, watch your dreams, watch your thoughts, I'm sorry, because they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. If you have a dream, something that you've wanted to do and always to do, to learn, or even to become, there's only one way to get there. And that's what this little short talk is going to be about today. So, as the famous actress Elizabeth Taylor said to her eighth husband, I don't plan to keep you long. <laughs> I have five points, so I want you to stay with me. First, believe your dream is possible. No negative thinking. You don't have time for it. Believe it and you can achieve it. Second, clarify it in your mind. You, what, you, what it is you want. You have to be specific, my friends. You need to be able to feel it, almost taste it. And before you begin, this is the big one, be prepared to get out of your comfort zone. Listen, they say that a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, and that's true. But in addition, every journey begins with a destination. It was Lewis Carroll that said, if you don't, have, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. So what is your destination? You see, by having your destination in mind, you'll always be able to gauge your progress. And with so many choices out there, you have to be specific about what you want. Don't just say, I want to save the world. Clarify how you want to save the world. Then third, once you're clear about your goal, you'll need to develop a plan. Yep, you're gonna to have to work for it. And don't expect it to be easy. It, and I give you this, never, ever, ever give up, or it will never happen. Everything of value and worth having in life is uphill. 
Because if your dream is important to you, it probably won't be easy to do. If it were easy, you would have attained it already. And why are you getting frustrated when, and discouraged when others don't see and agree with you about your dream? Maybe they don't see things the way you see them. Why do you have doubts when they seem disinterested or non-supportive of your dream? Newsflash, it's not their dream, it's yours. You have to put in the work. How, you may ask? Well, my friends, there are natural laws, physical laws, and universal laws. I was trained by John Maxwell. He's considered one of the world's most prolific writers and consultants on leadership and communication and personal growth. In his book, The 15 Laws of Growth, the very first law is the law of intentionality. In other words, you must be intentional about your own growth and professional life. Thomas Edison said, opportunity is missed by many people because it's dressed up in overalls and it looks like work. Because, yeah, that's what dreams are. Dreams take work. They take work and they take energy. The laws of physics still apply. A body at rest tends to stay at rest. Yet a body in motion continues in motion. So you know what? Let's get moving. But if you know anything else about Thomas Edison, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success before they gave up. Sound familiar? Every adversity, every failure, every heartache carries within it the seed of equal or greater benefit. How many times have you given up on something and watched that dream or that goal slip away? Is there something you really want? And if it is, you can't give up. Sometimes you need to step back and look at it from a different angle. And when you do, remember, you're not alone. You have friends, you have family, you have coworkers and mentors who may not believe in your dream, but they believe in you. Lean on them. Find like-minded individuals. Find someone who's in the position that you seek. Ask them for their help, or better yet, offer them your help in ways that you can. All along, coming alongside of them, you'll be able to learn from them, grow with them, but you'll enrich your own experience. And by the way, don't go it alone. Where's the sense in that? You know what networking is? It's not a dirty word. Networking means to reach out, listen to others, and make connections. So get to know people while you're here, in the field, the people that are already doing what you want to do. People who have achieved what you hope to achieve. Talk to them. Learn from them. Shadow them. Later for selfies. Later. Talk to them. Then remember to lift up the persons behind you and around you. This is no small part of anyone's success at all. The part where you get to lead the way for the next person and the next generation. Why? You're here at FDNY 2021. Last year was a tough year for a lot of us. Besides helping your community here and being able to build yourself up and getting stronger in our in industry, giving back connects you to like-minded people. It helps build up your self-esteem and helps you sharpen those softer skills when it comes to interpersonal relationships. But more than that, the up-and-coming generation, they are hungry. They're hungry for someone to share their skills and expertise. You see, there's a gap in our industry, and we all know it. There's a gap between experience and training. So give them what they crave, information. And fifth, once you've reached that summit, don't take it for granted. Success can be a fleeting fantasy, 
that leaves you in its wake pretty quickly. Keep feeding your dream. You do that by acknowledging the people who've helped you get to where you are, but also finding ways to give back to your community and helping someone else along the way. The world still needs dreamers and doers. So be one. For you, for your family, for your community, for our profession. After all you've achieved at a certain level of success, all of you have received, received, uh, achieved a level of success just by sitting in this room. Do not take that as small and do not take it lightly. What you learn here, no one can ever take away from you. But what else can you do? What other contribution can you make? Look at Bobby. I've known him for several years, but in the last six years, we've become pretty close. He's been a mentor, a friend to me. He's a man to be looked up to and a man to admire. I admire his zeal, his mentorship, his friendship, but most importantly, his fidelity. So when he asked me to speak in this time slot, I have to admit to you, I was flabbergasted. Because he's kind of a rock star if you've seen him in action yesterday. And you know how motivating he can be over these two days, these two important days. I thought, could I do that? Could I step into his shoes? And you know what? I thought that I could. Because he thought that I could. Sometimes, my friends, you have to run on borrowed belief before it shows up in your own life. He believed that I could. And I believe in all of you just by you being here. So in closing, you can get there from here. Whatever and wherever you're there is, you can get there from here. You just need to believe in what you want to achieve. Have a destination and know where it is you're going. Have a plan on how to get there and never give up. And lift up the people around you and behind you. And don't rest on your laurels. There's always more work to do. I really enjoyed sharing this talk with you today, but I would be remiss if not after looking out at those beautiful faces. My wife, Cheryl, who has put me back together more times than I can remember. To my sons, John and Malcolm. To my mom and my dad. I have to tell you, I couldn't get here without them. I'm honored and humbled to give this presentation, not to speak for Bobby Halton, because no one can do that but to be his emissary, to inspire you to reach new heights, and to do something extraordinary for this world and for our industry. Thank you for listening this morning, and thanks to Bobby for not only his belief in me, but for all the things he's done for our industry. God bless you, and stay safe, and I'll see you out there. Thank you, brother. I love you.